This is the party building video, day one. I am Mark Stewart, creator of the Epic Party, but I'm not going to say the leader. Leaders are going to spring up who are better than me, more forceful than me, and able to build the party really, really well. But someone's got to get it started, and here goes. Our first topic, our plank, in fact, is a devotion to term limits. This is long overdue, and we're not saying a constitutional change is necessary. It is a voluntary that this is what party members running for office pledge to do, and the public knows it. Term limits have a very good benefit in terms of humanity. Term limits put a limit on smugness, a limit on privilege, a limit even on haughtiness that some senators give themselves. Now, to their credit, most U.S. senators these days are actually down to earth, and all but one of the presidential candidates running now, Senate and House, are in that category. Down to earth, approachable, even front runner Elizabeth Warren is an approachable woman. But look what is haughty the legislation that they abide by that they abide by deficits that don't hurt them at age 45, 55, 65, 75 years old, but hurt our youngest generations. The kids who are 15 years old, who are never going to see a government burden less than it is now, and almost certainly far, far greater, thanks to spending that over and over and over again, the House and Senate members just ratify over and over. Yet, not for themselves, do they? They have their own health care system. If that doesn't smack of a separation based on status, I don't know what does. Okay? Health care, your, your, your healthiness does not get worse by serving in Washington, D.C. Okay? Your health care system should be no different. Freshman Senate, freshman House members, they have the benefit of actually telling the truth far more often than the seasoned legislator. Yeah, it's a PR mistake when a freshman makes a, well, some will call it a gaffe. Others will just say, you're telling the truth. They haven't learned how to spin. They, they, they don't do what the seasoned legislator does. They think, how will this affect my standing? And then that seasoned legislature then decides on the merits, okay? Um, they cogitate, then decide how much of the truth to tell. I respect the seniority of wisdom. Not age, because there are some very wise people who are still young. Generally, wisdom does climb with age. But it shouldn't be automatically tied to age, and we should be electing legislators who are wise. Seniority doesn't inherently mean more talent, and it almost certainly means less passion, and in the Senate, usually less willingness to change. Now, people will contend, your party is going to if you ever get people elected, they're not going to be able to serve really long in a powerful way. They're going to lose seniority. That's something that has to go in the first place. Okay? The seniority within our Congress is what keeps us from changing significantly. I contend that if you're a legislator who hasn't reduced our problems in the four years that you've been serving, you should resign. Our party charter is for seven years max, okay? That's typically one Senate term, but if you've started off with a resignation and had a year beforehand, uh, yes, one election quickly in. If you started three years in and have only four to go following an election, you're obligated to resign, okay? Now, how bad is that? You resign and someone else from your state who is probably as good as you can be found to take your place in an election. Your state sees a referendum. That's a good thing. Referenda every two years is wise. 
and even in the Senate, supposedly the, the chamber of stability, even in the Senate, it's the people's notions of stability that really ought to gird us in place of lobbyist notions and trendy media and interest groups notions. That's been the big problem. The Senate has not conformed to the Madisonian idea that ensured stability. We, the people, can control that and should. The Epic Party candidates will have a pledge of seven years maximum. And does that mean we lose out in the halls of Congress? Well, the long-tenured, stodgy Republican on his 24th year and looking for yet another re-election is going to be facing an epic candidate who is principled, who can say, I've tied myself to the will of the people better than you. And I think that that very seasoned House or Senate member is going to be in jeopardy of not getting that next election. I am not a fan of a constitutional amendment. That should be for bigger stuff. Now, I have read George Will's book in, front, in, ter, in favor of constitutionally authorizing term limits. I've read it twice. And I agree with so much, as usual, of what Mr. Will says. But a constitutional demand, which is a hefty thing, is subservient because... If we really have the ability to change the Constitution, three quarters of the state majorities, we certainly have the ability to do term limits without changing the Constitution, and that is turning out bad representatives every two years or turning out your senator every six. Okay, When the public will is at the level uh, that George Will would seek for an amendment, the public will to unelect somebody who is serving us wrong is there and fervent. I know it's not there now. It's part of the reason the Epic Party now exists, to call out problems and provide a solution that neither of the two major parties have given. I thank you for giving us your time, your thoughtfulness, and maybe down the road, your voting support. I'm Mark Stewart.